Hello everyone, my name is Savant here and welcome to Spell Sling on a Shoestring, the series where I show how you can play some of Magic the Gathering's greatest formats on a very small budget. Today we will be looking at White Weenie, an aggressive, powerful, creature-based deck that has proven to be a contender in many standard formats throughout the years, putting up great results every time it's appeared. With the recent introduction of Pioneer, we can now build a competitive and adaptable little aggro deck for less than the cost of a Saturday night takeaway. Before I jump into the deck tech, please click like, subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date with all the latest and greatest videos from yours truly. It really helps me out. So the concept of the White Weenie deck is simple. Empty your hand onto the board quickly, pressure your opponent and overwhelm them for the win. So let's start with our one drops, of which we have got 20 of them. This is by far the biggest part of the deck as it's the core of the strategy. We have two types of one drops, beaters and utility. Our beaters are different versions of Savannah Lions, only they provide more value than your typical vanilla 2-1 for your one white mana investment. Dauntless Bodyguard can protect a critical creature from removal or combat damage, such as a Lord or value creature. Mardu Woe Reaper's End of the Battlefield effect can exile an important creature from a graveyard, which is particularly good against Izzet Phoenix or Soul Flayer. And Soldier of the Pantheon is probably our most powerful one drop. As it has protection from multicolored, it dodges many powerful and popular removal spells. It can't be touched by Abrupt Decay, Oko, Teferi, or it is a charm, and can't be blocked by gold creatures like Crackling Drake, Grim Flayer, or Reflector Mage. The incidental life gain may also prove relevant in some racing situations. Our utility creatures provide a little more value than our beaters at the expense of offensive power. These are necessary for two reasons. One, if our main assault fails, we stand a chance to recover and grind back into the game. And two, when we are ahead, we need to make sure that we can keep pressure on and not run out of things to do. Thraven Inspector is a 1-2 for 1 white mana that gives us a clue token when it enters the battlefield, which allows us to draw a card for 2 mana. Being able to draw more cards in an aggro deck is a luxury not to be overlooked, and sometimes that one card you need to close the game out is just a single draw away. Giant Killer is also a 1 mana 1-2, and is possibly the most flexible creature in the deck. It can attack and block just as well as Thraben Inspector, but it can also affect the board in multiple ways, between its activated ability and adventure spell. Chop Down hits many powerful creatures in the format, like Awoken Horror, Questing Beast, and Siege Rhino. And Giant Killer's tap ability can make combat a nightmare for the opponent. Both the adventure and the ability may be a little costly, but it's worth it for the flexibility. Next up are our two drops. We have a total of eight, and they've been specifically chosen for their offensive power and ability to race other aggressive strategies. Adanto Vanguard is a 1-1 one, one for one and a white and is a fast, relentless attacker with its ability to gain plus two plus zero while attacking. It's extremely resistant to removal and is most control players' worst nightmare. The ability to gain indestructible in exchange for life is exceptional and one that cannot be overstated. It is terrible on defense, however, and a vanguard that can't attack is as good as dead. So if you expect Goblin Chain Whirler, this will be the first creature I would consider sideboarding. Glorybound Initiate is an extremely underrated threat. It is another 3-1 for one and a white, but what sets it apart from the other options is its exert ability. When it exerts, it doesn't untap in the next untap step, but in exchange, it gains a huge plus one, plus three bonus for the turn and lifelink, allowing you to punch through smaller blockers while recuperating some of the life that could be lost on the crackback. The next creature we're looking at is Banalish Marshal. For triple white, you get a three, three human knight that gives all other creatures you control a plus one, plus one bonus to power and toughness. This anthem effect is almost always going to shorten your clock by a whole turn, and just one or two turns with this Lord effect on the board is practically guaranteed to close out the game. Of all the creatures in the deck, this is the one worth protecting the most. At the top of our curve, we have Venerated Loxodon. This 5 mana 4 4 has Convoke, meaning that each creature you tap while casting the spell pays for one generic mana or one mana of that creature's colour. So if you have 5 creatures out, this Elephant Cleric will cost you 0 mana if you tap your team. While this may seem counterintuitive in a deck that wants to always be attacking, the fact that you get to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature that convoked it more than makes up for the turn taken to cast it. 
you don't even need to convoke many to get great value. Even convoking with just two creatures will massively grow your onboard power. It's also worth noting that a 4-4 body is quite substantial in this format for both offense and defense and against removal. The final non-land card in the main is Brave the Elements, and it's the secret weapon of the deck. For one white mana, it gives all of your creatures protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. This is an amazing, flexible card with so many strong uses. It can act as a main deck way of surviving sweepers like Sweltering Suns and Deafening Clarion, protect your marshals from targeted removal, cause blowouts in combat by preventing damage to your creatures, and can often make the team unblockable for that final alpha strike. This card may seem unassuming, but once you start playing with it, you'll see just how incredible it is. And the mana base is very straightforward. 17 planes and 3 castle Ardenvale. The castles are there as a way to provide inevitability against more controlling decks, or to provide an emergency blocker in a racing situation. This fulfills a similar role to Legion's Landing, but without having to take up non-land slots to fit it. The sideboard is quite straightforward. We have two Deafening Silence for spell-heavy decks like Izzet Phoenix and Jeskai Ascendancy combo, three Fragment Eyes to take care of problem artifacts and enchantments like Smuggler's Copter, Wilderness Reclamation and Stone Coil Serpent, two Baffling End for more creature-based matchups, two Devout Decree to deal with anything from black or red heavy decks, as both colours have strong aggro decks right now, two Imposing Sovereign, again for more creature-based decks, either to stop haste from red decks, or just minimise the amount of blocking your opponent can effectively do, two Sorcerer Spyglass to turn off any activated abilities, most notably from Vehicles and Planeswalkers, and finally, two Lyndon the Steadfast Queen. She comes in against other aggressive decks, allowing you to keep attacking while buffering your own life total to help you win that race. At the time of recording, this deck came in just under $26 on MTG Goldfish, which is incredibly cheap for a deck with this level of power. If you're looking to upgrade the deck to full power, you can do the following. You can add four Boros Elite, two Kithian Hero of Akros, four Knight of the White Orchid, 4 Thalia's Lieutenant, and 4 Declaration in Stone. And you can remove 4 Giant Killer, 4 Adanto Vanguard, 4 Glory Bend Initiate, 4 Venerated Loxodon, and 2 Planes. This upgrade will cost roughly $45 and will really supercharge the deck. This will turn it into a honed, explosive build, with Thalia's Lieutenant providing a slight tribal synergy and payoff, an additional Anthem effect. While I don't include sideboards in the upgrade section, as they are subject to the metagame, I can recommend some options as possible upgrades. Authority of the Consuls, Selfless Spirit, Gideon Ally of Zendikar, Rest in Peace, and History of Finalia. Did you like this deck? Are there other cards that you would include? What other decks would you like to see a budget version of? Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this and want to support me, there are several ways you can do so. You can follow me on Twitter and Twitch, you can join my Patreon, or you can get me a coffee. All links are in the description box down below. I'm also happy to say that I've partnered with Inked Gaming to give you lovely folks a 10% discount in their store, from custom and store art playmats, dice bags, PC gaming mouse pads, and loads more. Be sure to click the link in the description box below and use the offer code SAVANTIR for 10% off. By doing this, you're also supporting me, which I think is really nice of you. So thank you very much for watching, and until next time, take it easy, and keep on janking.